Today on Paul's Old Crap, we're going to do an unboxing and demonstration of the Nomad MP3 player from Creative Labs. Now this is one of, I believe, the first MP3 players that really hit the market like over 20 years ago. And the reason I want to do a project on this is because I actually owned one of these back when I was in high school. I bought it new, I think it was probably in 2000 or 2001 for something like $500. So I managed to find this one and now we're going to basically relive that experience of owning the Nomad MP3 player. So this particular one I did find on eBay and it was something like $10 and the auction when I was looking at it, it was actually fully sealed like shrink wrap and everything. Uh, but unfortunately by the time I received it, it had already been opened and someone had put packing material on the inside of this box. And because it went through that eBay global shipping program where no matter where it comes from, it all goes to like Kentucky and then some people sit there for three weeks sitting on it and then they uh, ship it back out to you or something like that. I think they opened it and shoved packing material inside of it. I, I don't understand, but uh, I was kind of annoyed at that because I wanted the experience of opening this thing up brand new for the first time. Um, but I mean, for $10, I, I can't really argue with the price, so... Anyway, let's, uh, let's take a look. So yeah, this, uh, this did have a piece of tape that was here and that was already cut. So that sucks. So the way this is packed up is kind of strange because um, like there's no film that was covering this or anything like that. And I can't really remember if that was the case with the one that I bought 20 years ago, but I mean, looking at this thing, it, it does look brand new. Like if I look inside the battery compartment here, it, uh, it looks like it's never had batteries installed. So um, yeah, it's strange, but this is the, uh, the Nomad MP3 player. Uh, one of the reasons why I liked this a lot back in high school is because the thing was so compact, like it was tiny and you could just cart this around with earbuds in your pocket. And yeah, like a lot of the kids that I went to school with would have like Discmans or stuff like that. And you know, if you're playing CDs, that's, that's quite a bit larger than this. So that's one of the reasons why I bought this and one of the reasons why I was so willing to spend upwards of $500 to do that. It must've been crazy, but yeah, anyway. So I think the reason why they shoved packing material in here is because this was just kind of like loose in here. So yeah, I'm not really sure. But anyway, this is the Nomad Cradle. So this handles the charging for the unit as well as the data connection. Uh, it's got this old serial port on here, which you actually use to connect to your computer. So you can't have a computer that's too new, like USB only or something like that, because you won't be able to get your, uh, your songs onto here. Uh, this is parallel only, and it also comes with the, uh, the cable to do this. So obviously this is still fully sealed, so that's, that's nice. And I was remembering back in the day when I would copy songs over, like over parallel, it takes forever. And uh, we're going to actually demonstrate that as well, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, this also functions as a charger. I'm not sure if I already said that. Um, this is the power adapter. Now this I did see was already ripped open. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure if someone did actually attempt to plug this in at some point. It's hard to say, but yeah. Anyway, so we're going to put that off to the side there. And it does come with this, like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's real leather, maybe it's just fake leather, this little carrying pouch. And I really liked this. So that's still sealed as well. So that's cool. What else do we have in here? And it looks like this bag of goodies is actually sealed as well. A 
We're going to start off with our brand new set of earbuds. I think I see little, oh yeah, the little foam bits in here I think are uh, disintegrating. Because I see, oh yeah. Yeah, it's like falling apart right in my hand here. Yeah, it's like, it's, oh, that's too bad. Oh well, I wasn't going to use these anyway, but yeah, the foam obviously didn't last that long, so. Uh, oh, yeah, one thing I'm going to mention, this does come with its own rechargeable batteries, but uh, I did already open the outside of this box to double check on the batteries before I started filming this. And yeah, these are in fact just like completely useless now. There's like leakage or something weird happening on the tops of these batteries so um yeah these cannot be used but it did it did come with rechargeable batteries in the first place because as soon as you put the nomad onto the charger it will start to charge the batteries so these are going to get thrown out and that is actually why i did buy some energizer batteries uh these i believe are just standard nickel metal hydride uh, yes, N-I-M-H, which is the same type that I bought, basically just standard AAA rechargeables. So we're going to be using new batteries, obviously, with this. Uh, let's see. I don't really remember this. It looks like you could uh, put little labels on your media cards that have the creative logo. I, I'm not sure if I ever did this with the one that I owned, but yeah, that's kind of neat. And speaking of, what it does come with is a smart media card. So this does use smart media, and you'll see here, we just push this button and it opens up. The smart media slot is right in there. There is 32 megabytes of memory internal to this, and then when you add the 32 megabyte card, you get a total of 64 megabytes. And if you had other smart media cards, you could just use those and put songs on them and stuff like that. And the way you put songs onto it, um, we'll, we'll find this out when I do the demonstration, but I think you, you start loading the internal memory with the number of songs you want on there, and then when that gets full, then you move on to the memory card. So it's not like just one main storage size of 64. It's basically two slices of 32 each. So uh, you might have like leftover space on the internal and the uh, the external card because you can't put like half a song on each type thing. So the way you load songs onto that, uh, it does matter based on the location of the memory, but we will take a look at that in a bit. Uh, I don't understand what these stickers are for, these little silver stickers. That's strange. That might be relevant, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, we have installation CD and we have a content CD. I don't remember what's on there. I'll take a look though. Uh, technical support. What do we have here? The quick start guide. So, I mean, fairly basic stuff tells you how to hook up your Nomad to your parallel port. Um, the content CD has a bunch of music on it from people they like or people who probably paid them money to be included. So, uh, and then, yeah, there's, there's a custom application that uh, we will need to install to accomplish all of the copying. So... Um, I'll be using a Windows 98 computer to do this on, I think. And the other requirements talks about for parallel. Um, your parallel port needs to be uh, ECP or ECP slash EPP. And it says something like, to get the fastest data rates possible, make sure your BIOS is set to ECP. And then that will provide a speed of up to 800 kilobits per second. Uh, versus the 150 kilobits of a slower setting. So, I mean, like, yeah, rocket speed, right? So slow. <laughs> uh, and then finally we have here um, a full getting started guide. But 
I don't think I even read this manual back when I owned this thing in the first place. Oh, it does tell you a few things about how the uh, the buttons will work. So, for example, the stop button also doubles as the power off button, which is something you're probably going to need to know. And yeah, it talks about the rest of the buttons there. So let's take a look at the actual Nomad unit itself. So we have our play button, which I believe is the button you hit to actually turn the unit on in the first place. And then to turn it off when you're done listening to music, you hold down the stop button and it turns off. But when we have our batteries charged up, we will go and uh, test all of that anyway. Uh, we have our skip forward and skip backward or fast forward, fast or fast forward and rewind buttons there. Uh, down here, we have a button that says rec and erase. Um, this is for using the voice recorder. So it does actually have this little microphone right here and you can actually record whatever you want and it stores it into the memory. So that's kind of handy if you need to do just like voice notes or something like that. Uh, on the other side here, we did also uh, talk about the open button already. So that's how that is opened. And this right here is how you actually eject media from inside here, but we'll demonstrate that in a bit. Uh, we do have our volume button, so we have the volume up and volume down there. Mode button, I believe that's how you go between like the voice record mode and the MP3 player mode. And there's, uh, I can't remember if there's actually more modes than that. Once we have it powered up, we'll, uh, we'll take a closer look at that. And then, oh, there's a button here for like repeat and I guess equalizer. So that's basically repeat settings for your, uh, your music and changing the EQ settings. Ooh, okay, here it says there's a FM mode. So apparently this thing has an FM radio in it. I think I may have actually forgotten entirely about that. Hmm, okay. Um, repeat button, so repeat, repeat all, shuffle, that's basically standard stuff. Uh, equalizer mode, so it's got some presets in there. Uh, operating in voice mode. Uh, if you hold down the rec slash erase button, the erase mode is selected and that's how you delete voice recordings um, directly on the unit uh, without having to then go back onto your computer to do it. And you might be able to delete MP3 songs off of it using that same thing as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't think it really... The Nomad player supports only MI-SC4 files recorded using 8 kilohertz mono format. So, I mean, it's not, it's not like super high quality or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it tells you where to get music from. It tells you to go to mp3.com. Yeah, I don't think that's really a thing anymore. <laughs> uh, and then the rest of this, I think, is basically talking about the actual Nomad software, but we're going to demonstrate that on an actual computer. So I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to get a computer set up for the Nomad, and we're going to demonstrate the Nomad software with copying some music over to it, and we'll test out the rest of the features on the player with some music. All right, so we're ready to go with our demonstration. What I've got here is uh, we're actually using Windows 95 instead of Windows 98, which I think is what I mentioned uh, earlier in this video. And that's because I could only get the dock to work in Windows 95 and not on my Windows 98 computer for some strange reason. So that's what we're gonna go with. Anyway, to get started, uh, the dock is turned on and we do have the parallel cable running from the dock to the back of our laptop. So now we just take our Nomad from our awesome little case and we're going to turn it on because I believe it does have to be turned on for this to work. And we're going to basically just place it in there. And because it is rechargeable, um, it is already starting to charge the batteries and that is with this uh, blinking red light on here. So if you don't have rechargeable batteries, don't put it in this dock because it will try to charge them. Um, I'm not too sure if uh, if you're trying to use alkaline batteries, I don't know how you would actually 
put stuff on here maybe if you didn't have batteries in it, but that wouldn't make sense. I have no idea. I'm just rambling at this point, but anyway, I've already installed the creative software on the computer. So we open up the creative nomad manager and it gives us this little screen that looks like the nomad, which is pretty neat. And it tells us it's initializing and it should only take a moment. And this little dialogue pops up saying it's connecting, it's getting the player's status, and it's pulling the information from both the internal and the flash memory. And we are connected to the player and we're ready to begin our transfers. So hopefully this shows up pretty decently on the camera here. Uh, like I said before, it's basically done in the two slices. So we have the first section here, which tells us we're using internal memory. And then if we drop this little button down here, then we have the option to pick flash memory. And this basically is different from the internal memory. So when you're copying music or other stuff over to the Nomad, you have to do it um, either in the internal or the flash. You don't just copy it in, in, in general and have it automatically placed. You have to specifically tell it where to go. And in this case, uh, we'll actually hop back over to the internal memory. Um, so there is a file that comes with it by default just called Nomad, and that's like some sort of sample file. Um, I think what we're gonna try doing is just gonna, well, actually I'll leave the file there. I don't wanna play it for potential copyright reasons because it's got some like filler background music, but yeah. Anyway, um, we do select, we've got MP3 voice or all. So if you have voice recordings from the Nomad, they'll show up in here. And if you have it obviously in all mode, you'll have your MP3s and your voice tracks there. And it's it's pretty simple. There's a few options that we, de uh, we do have here. So we could delete the file if we really wanted to. Um, this button here tells us we can move it over to our flash card. And then when you have multiple tracks in here, you can actually change the order in which they go. And what we're gonna do right now is actually copy a file over. So I'm gonna click the transfer button. I'm pretty sure that's the right button to click. And it's going to think about it. For a little while. Oh my god, hurry up. Okay, so it kind of went off of my screen here. Let me fix that. So now it wants us to select where the file is and uh, if I go into my documents, um, we're going to pick a file that I've previously done myself, so we're not gonna have any potential copyright problems with testing it. Um, it's the orchestral cover I made of the Duke Nukem 3D theme. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna push this button here, which is download. Now, if I were to select this button here, um, actually, I think I have to unselect there. And then if I push this button, or hmm, I was hoping I'd be able to get this file off but it doesn't give me that option. Because there's a button here that says upload, but if I click this, it doesn't let me. Oh, that's a shame. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin the download process. And like we mentioned earlier, this is done over the computer's parallel port. So this is very slow. Now, the configuration of this system, I believe is ECP and I can't actually get into the BIOS to change it. So I'm not sure if this is actually the fastest way for this to go, but uh, yeah, like it's, it's moving pretty slow. So I think um, I'm just gonna speed the video up here so we don't have to sit and uh, wait for this to finish. While this is uh, almost finished, I'm going to actually try to show you what's happening over on the unit here. Um, it's got this flashing light here for data and on the screen it actually says file writing so that basically tells you that there is something happening here and as soon as that dialog finishes the data light has stopped blinking and we're just basically down to the normal charging so i'm going to carefully put that down and as we see on the screen the transfer did finish so if we hop back over to our screen here, actually what we're gonna do is, I've got nothing else to copy over. We're just gonna do that one music file. So 
on my internal memory here, we do have two tracks. Um, the Nomad one is still the first one and the second one is mine. So if I click the up button, I'm assuming this will do something. Okay, so now my track is number one and the Nomad one is the second track. And I kind of want to see if I can get the Nomad one over to my flash card. So I'm going to click the move button and moving file from internal memory to flash memory. And it does it like a copy job. So it's extremely slow as well. Yeah. But I mean, this is, this is almost done here. And I, I remember having to do this whenever I wanted to load up different songs on my Nomad um, back in high school because my taste in music would occasionally change and I'd want to put different songs in there for different reasons. And yeah, this took forever. So, and okay. So now it's showing us the view of the flash memory card and we do have the one track Nomad. So if we pop back over to our internal memory. Now we do have one track and that's my, uh, my own music track there, which is good. And the other thing I want to show you, I think, is the information here. So this is just basically a generic summary. It tells us the capacity of our internal and flash memory. So each of these cards is, well, sorry, the internal memory is 32 megabyte and the flash card is 32 megabytes. And you can use different types of cards, obviously, but I think there's a limitation, like it doesn't use five volt, uh, only like 3.3 or something like that. The instructions will tell you that in more detail, but it does tell you also your used memory and your free memory. So yeah, when you're loading up music, um, you want to try and optimize it as much as possible. So, cause if you're almost about to run out of memory on one and you've got a smaller music track on another card, you can like move it from one to the other to kind of like get as many tracks as you can within the space. So I, I remember doing that and like, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a pain, but I mean, that's kind of what you had to go through to own an MP3 player. So yeah. Anyway, what we're going to do now is just exit out of this and I basically think we're going to demonstrate the actual Nomad now. All right, for demonstrating the actual hardware, let's take a look at how the smart media card goes into this thing. So over here we do have the open button, so we push that and this little lid opens and then the eject slider is right at the back here, push that upward and then out comes our smart media card, 32 megabyte. So we'll just put this back in, even though the song that we're going to demo isn't actually on here, but we're going to keep it in there anyway. And so right now we can see the screen is off. And if we hit the play button over here, that will turn the player on. So it says Nomad and it takes us into MP3 mode automatically. And there's a few icons on your screen here. Uh, over here is like uh, some sort of uh, bass boost thing, which as far as I know is always on. I don't know if you can even turn that off. It's just there. Uh, in the middle, we do have the battery indicator kind of like on the upper side there. Uh, right in the very center of the screen is your track number. So as you can see, it's zero one. And then right to the right of that is the little icon that indicates there's a smart media card inside of here. Uh, if there was no card in there, you wouldn't see that icon. And then below that is the name of the file that it's playing. And it's giving us the actual raw name uh, with the eight character limit and the .mp3 extension. Uh, I don't think this particular track that I have on here has that proper mp3 tag data um, for the actual song listing. Otherwise, I think you would actually see the proper name listed. So yeah, anything that's like self-made and you don't add those uh, that proper data within the file, it just shows up as round, like that mp3 file name. So. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is, let's just see if we hit, okay, so if we hit the next button on there, it does take us to, um, right now it's showing us, I think it's actually playing this, um, that's the Nomad track that's uh, built onto there, and because it's on the media card, it still is part of our standard mp3 listing, so... Um, yeah, it's actually playing that file, I think. I'm going to just hit the stop button 
and takes us right back to the file name. So when it's playing, uh, it's, it might be hard to see on the camera here, but there's like uh, little dots or little like dashes around that track listing number there, and it actually kind of like circles around when it's actually playing a song. So if I hit the play again, um, yeah, I'm not too sure how it's gonna show up on the camera, but it does make a little animation on the screen there when it's actually playing. So we'll hit the stop to turn it back off. And I think what we're going to do now is we're just going to hit the back here to take us back to this song. And I'm going to actually play this. Now, I'm going to just use... Oh, it's already actually playing. I'm going to see if... Um, I'm just using a set of speakers here. I'm going to see if you can uh, hear this on my microphone. So this is a uh, orchestral cover of the Duke Nukem 3D theme that I did a while back. Um, we're not going to listen to the whole thing, obviously, but yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, this is a, a pretty nice MP3 player, very compact. And when I was using this in school, I mean, like this was so much more convenient than like an, a CD player or anything like that. So. Uh, let's see, another thing we're going to demonstrate here is if we hit the mode button, it takes us to, oh yeah, FM radio. I wonder if this works actually, because, okay, I'm getting static on my speakers right now. Let me see if I can, there's a station very close to this. Uh... <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping that doesn't get flagged for copyright, but there was some uh, commercial music that just came up on one of these radio stations. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the FM radio does actually work. So that's not bad. Uh, if we flip over to voice mode. So right now it says no voice files because we haven't done any recordings on here. Uh, let's do a recording though. Um, so... Right over here, we have the record button, and if we push that, the recording is now starting. Welcome to Paul's Old Crap. Stop. Okay, I think it worked. Plug our speakers in, and I'll try playing this. Recording is now starting. Welcome to Paul's old crap. <laughs> okay, so the quality is very poor. Uh, it might not be too obvious on the uh, on my microphone here, but yeah, that's <laughs> it's. I mean, it's for something that's this small and over twenty years old. Sure, not bad, but yeah, it's uh, for recording standards. It's not very good, but anyway. Uh, if we hit mode again, it takes us right back to MP3 mode. And like we saw when we were doing that software demonstration, it does have the listing specifically for like voice files as well. So if you did a bunch of voice recording on here for uh, say your schoolwork or whatever, then you could copy those voice files over to your computer after and have them as backup notes or whatever. Uh, I think the only thing other than that we were going to look at is, let's just look at the equalizer modes. So, okay, so when you hit the button right now, it just takes you to the repeat options. So there's repeat, shuffle, blah, blah, blah. If you hold down the button, then we have our EQ mode. So there's normal, classic, jazz, rock, blah, blah, blah. So I think it's just those. And, I mean, sure. I guess it just depends on what type of music you've got on there. Otherwise, you just leave it as normal and who cares. And I think the only other thing I was going to actually um, show you here is, uh, I think I forgot to mention this earlier, there's this little button here, it's a sliding button that says hold. If you push that down, it clicks in place. Um, there's a little lock icon that now shows up on the screen. And what happens is you can't do anything. Whenever I push a button, it just says the word hold on the screen. 
So if I try to adjust the volume, if I try to hit mode, if I try to hit play, it just says hold. It basically blocks all of that out. So if you wanted to do, uh, let's say you were taking this jogging and it was like in your pocket and the buttons were getting hit by other things in your pocket, you could put that hold mode on and then it wouldn't interrupt your music. So, and click it back up and we can do things like adjust our volume again. So that is pretty neat. Anyway, uh, to turn this off, we hold down the stop button and hold it down for like a couple seconds and then it says power down on the screen and then the unit completely turns off. And that is the Creative Nomad. Probably one of my favorite pieces of technology that uh, I owned uh, back in that era. And it was, uh, it, was, it was funny because, well, not only did it cost me so much money, like it was between four and 500 Canadian dollars to buy this. Um, when I showed up to school with this thing, you know, and like other kids were looking at it and like, what is that, right? Because they were used to having like tape players and CD players. And I'm like, well, this just plays MP3s. And they're like, well, what's that? Like it's computer music, you know? It's gonna be the next big thing, of course, right? And uh, I remember, I think it was one kid said to me, it's like, oh, he's holding the future in his hands. And yes, I think I was. So <laughs> that is why I wanted to relive the experience of playing with the Nomad MP3 player. And now that I own this one again, I'm going to put it back in the box and leave it on a shelf forever because I don't see any scenario well, I will practically use this, so yeah. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and it was, uh, it was fun to, uh, to relive this experience. So yeah, I don't know. I had fun and I hope you do too. And I think this pretty much wraps it up. So thanks for watching.